And did y'all know that three of those characters in that movie were fictitious characters? They weren't even real. So to think it went down like that, it's like, nah, that shit is tailor-made for Hollywood, man. You understand what I'm saying? And that's a real dynamic. So let me, you know, familiar with the human zoos, right? Yeah. Oh, right, and that's a real dynamic. So, um, and then you can trace the human zoos back to a more sinister, kind of diabolical thing that they used to do for fun. You read about some of the things that they used to do in a book called, um, what's the book by Harriet? Something. I mean, Harriet uh, Washington. Medical apartheid. All the experiments that they did on black women during slavery with no anesthesia because it wasn't even invented yet. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? They give you all, they gave the sisters all, some corn and bite on the corn while they open you up, cut you open and open you up. You understand what I'm saying? That was, that was it, nothing else. Um, Highland Law wasn't around, Advil, etc. <laughs> they didn't have that stuff then. You understand what I'm saying? But anyway, you and two, but anyway. These are some of the things, I'm just going through. These are some of the things that I talk about that I'm on tour with right now, traveling around the country on the Black History 101 Mobile Museum tour. And what I've done, starting six months ago, I developed, um, I developed an online black, an alternative black studies course for those of us that not don't go to college. And I was one of those individuals. I was kicking, going, kicking and screaming. I lasted two weeks <laughs> on college campus, man. You understand what I'm saying? I said, the hell with this. So what I did at that point, though, was start building my own library and studying myself. Then later on, I ended up getting a Bachelor of Science degree online. You understand? Which is a lot easier for me because my psyche couldn't take going to school every day in New York, traveling in the snow, paying these people, you understand what I'm saying, to miseducate me. So I'm not trying to deter any of y'all. Do your thing, get the degrees, however y'all got to do it. But I'm saying to you, that was just my psyche. I'm not gonna pay you to lie to me. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Nah. So yeah. So anyway, um, the alternative black studies course. I wrote an entire curriculum. I actually wanted to go to school to write alternative curriculums so we could help establish homeschools. And this is what I wanted to do. So when that didn't work out, um, six months ago, I developed an entire black, alternative black studies course. All the things you're not gonna get in school. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful thing, I opened it up. January 6th was the first class. And uh, surprisingly enough, 21 people signed up. And it was a beautiful thing. And I was shocked, because I wasn't expecting that many, to be honest with you. And some of the things we covered, everything from the whole idea of spirit right on up to what's going on today. And I broke it up in modules. And I let people move at their own pace. Online, on your phone, tablet, computer, and you can move at your own pace. I'm gonna give you all some information about that a little bit later on. But one of the things I talk about in my alternative black studies course is the whole idea of when we keep, people keep saying, well, I'm spiritual, I'm spiritual. Well, well, since this is, this is a small group, I can get as deep as I can get, right? Is that cool? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, that whole yeah. idea of having to announce the fact that you're spiritual, then you're probably not spiritual at all. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine a plumber coming to your house after you call the plumber and he's walking through the door talking about he's the plumber? Well, shit, if you're the plumber, then fix the pipes. Then I'll know you're the plumber. Yeah. Right or wrong? Right. Okay, so we don't have to talk about aspects of spirituality. The only context we need to talk about spirituality in is when, is when someone has taken our spirituality and flipped it and did the remix and tried to make it religion. Now, help, 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 apply knowledge now. You can make concepts of spirituality into religion. You cannot do the reverse. You're not going to take religious concepts and try to make them spiritual. You follow what I'm saying? And I see people trying to do that and they're coming up short simply because spirit is what it is. Right now, the few people in this room, we're creating a certain environment, mm -hmm. a certain atmosphere, a certain spirit that's in this room right now. We don't have to give it a name, but when we leave, you carry it with you, all right? That particular thing, uh, me and my wife had this conversation, we tried to figure out well, what is that thing called? I said, what we, tried, what we need to do though, we need to put it 
in a way where people can readily digest it. All right? So walk away with this. From this day forward, all right, the seven of us, we have to leave people, spaces, and places better than we found them. You understand what I'm saying? Then they'll know that you were there. <laughs> Who was that brother, that yada, yada, yada? You understand what I'm saying? If we leave people, places, and spaces better than we found it. The other thing is, I have a, um, a, um, a statement, a mission statement for my life, which everyone in the room should have a mission statement. But before I got married, I had this conversation with my now wife, and I asked her, well, like, you know, at the behest of Professor Smalls, he said, before you get married, put her in the car, take one of the long five-hour drives and get everything out. After that, if you still want to get married, then you got my blessing, you understand? And I did that. I did that. So first question was, what's your, what's your purpose in life? Why are you here? What's your assignment? You understand what I'm saying? Her mission statement was this. She's on a journey of the self, through the self, back to the self. All right? She's on a journey of the self, through the self, back to the self. All right? Um, come on in. All right. Which is one of those kind of mission statements and concepts that you got to sit with for a minute. Because what other journey could you possibly be on other than the self, perfecting the self? And then everyone that you come in contact with is not a coincidence. For sure. Not a coincidence. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So either they're going to come aid to what you're doing and assist you. Or they're gonna create opposition. And even in the opposition and the hurdles that you gotta go over through and around, therein lies the lessons. You understand what I'm saying? But anyway, let me move forward. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut this part down so we can go into the lecture that we came here to talk about. So the whole idea of the spirit being a kinship to the spiral, because everything spins. And if we got anybody in the room that's hooked on the flat earth thing, just bear with me for a minute. Alright? Everything spins because we set everything in motion via the spiral. If you look at your fingertips, your fingerprint spirals out of your finger. Hair spirals. Alright? Hair spirals out of your head. The whole idea spiral, which is akin to the spirit. Your blood spirals through the veins. Plants spiral up from the soil. Everything spirals because it's alive. Hell, you go to the bathroom and do number two, the toilet spirals, the water. <laughs> you understand? Because it's in motion, it's moving. So we got to understand this particular dynamic. And that we hear spirals. All right? Blood spirals. DNA spirals. All right? Before you came through the womb and out into the world, you spiraled. You were sitting upright. Am I right or wrong? Help me out, y'all. Mm -hmm. And by the time you, you had to prepare yourself, you had to rotate. So the head can come out first, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So everything spirals because everything was in motion and it's a real dynamic. You can tie that deep science back to life and birth itself, plain and simple. All right, and that's and that's that's a real dynamic. Hell, any barber shop right now that you're going to, trust me, you'll see a brother after you took off the do rag, you'll see that <laughs> right or wrong because that's the universe. So what do we do? We etched it five inches thick deep into the pyramid text, to the pyramid wall, to show people. In 2020, right now, right down the street, you can go to the barber shop and you'll see that. Because it's who we are, it's who and what we are as a people. That's just what it is, plain and simple. Spiral is a kinship to spirit. All right, so y'all missed the first part of the talk. Um, I said I'm probably the oldest person in the room. I'll be 60 and shit. Y'all not 60, I'm sure they're not my age. When I was coming to be, y'all ever, you ever break dance? You ever b-boy break dance? Nah, a little bit. <laughs> but we used to spin on our heads. We used to spin on our backs because it was alive. You understand what I'm saying? Um, if you look at some of the dances, well, I don't know about today, but I ain't doing this dance today. Some of the dances, we still spin. You understand what I'm saying? But this is a very critical dynamic thing that we keep with us that we see in nature. These right here are our, our antennas. The coils. Alright? Any radio, transistor radio, anything that's trying to connect with the cosmic forces, spirals, is coiling. You understand what I'm saying? Animals, especially insects and snakes coil. Alright? 
and drum up that particular uh, particular energy. But I can go over, I can go over Fibonacci sequence. I can go over and tie it back into nature. I ain't got to prove that to y'all. Y'all already know it's there. But what I tried to do, or before y'all came in, we're talking about applied knowledge. We talk about it's cool to have a lot of information and have knowledge, but if we can't go out here on campus and learn and apply it, if we can't go to the job, home, where we go to interact with people, our people, and apply it, then what good is it? You understand what I'm saying? We're talking about applied knowledge. So back on the plantation, how did they apply what came with the human being? So how does this fit into the applied knowledge? Now, you the Africans setting up the shots where they do that the brain in the head. Well, what they do is they took that particular concept and but because we had it in us, not being able to talk on the plantation, what they did was they, they did the hairstyles and they put inside of the hairstyles the escape route of the plantation. So then if you look at the hair, you understand what I'm saying? They would put maps inside of the hair. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm not sure how deep y'all are in understanding what went down on the plantation. First of all, we have 1,000 different languages on the continent, of which the 12 people in this room, we can't read, write, or speak. Help me out if y'all can, because I'd like to learn something. Beyond high, go to hell, and a few other choice words, we don't know. You understand what I'm saying? Even when Muslims down the street, beyond assalamu alaikum, inshallah, mashallah, and a few other terms, that's it. We don't read and write and speak languages fluently. Now, when I travel around the country and I ask audiences that are diverse, all right, I find you know, a, a, a gentleman or a woman, I say, well, how many languages do you speak in the home? Every time I ask that question, it's always two or more languages. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being able to speak two or three different languages in the home? So when you go to have that deeper discussion, you turn to your wife or your girlfriend, or you have to discipline your child, you can speak in a language that's, that has more substance to it, as opposed to the harsh English language. Now you know the English language, one word has eight different definitions. And depends on what part of the country you're from and how you were brought up, it means different things. Can I give you an example? Who from New York? Y'all from New York, okay. Now, if somebody from New York, if you say, yo, like, what's up? Like, okay, yo, so what's up? You understand what I'm saying? Because we're more aggressive. We want to like, so what's up? If we said that in the South, you're like, oh, yo, it ain't nothing. You understand what I'm saying? About to go down and do yada, 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 whoop, and whoop, or go across town, whatever. But we take that as like you're challenging us. Like, what's up? You understand what I'm saying? Um, different parts of the country respond different ways. Now, if we spoke our own language, we probably wouldn't have the issues. Because I'd be able to say to these brothers over here that just walked in and said, I love y'all, man. And then y'all would look at me like I'm gay. <laughs> you know what I'm But if we spoke a language where you, we understood that, then they wouldn't be looking at me like that. There wouldn't be no funny business going on. But because we speak the English language, this is a bastard language. They ain't been around long. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? <coughs> All right, so I'm going to move on. We're going to move past this applied knowledge. But it's there in nature. We can see it all day long. Everything spirals, that's a lie. Spir- all you gotta do is remember spiral is a kinship to spirit. Your locks spiral. You understand? Because it's your antenna. Now, you heard Snoop Dogg has to apologize to old girl. Yeah. Right? Yes. Straight up, they won't get no apologize. <laughs> apologize exactly. out of me. I did. I did. It I is like what that. it is. <laughs> they said you throw a rock in the crowd of dogs on one of the hollers, the one that get hit. You understand what I'm saying? Where I'm from, we say you don't start no shit, won't be no shit. You understand what I'm saying? So now there's a long line of people now joining the chorus on disrespecting Kobe. You heard the latest one, your man Charles Barker. You heard what he said? No, what he said? Y'all didn't hear Charles or Kool Charles. He said, um, the way we should remember Kobe Bryant, we have to remember Kobe Bryant as a rapist. He yeah, said that? Charles Barkley? Yeah. But, but the accuser actually just came out and admitted and said she lied. Not only did she lie, but not to disrespect the women in the room, this chick had four other semen yeah, in her ass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When she went for the rape kit, yeah. And she, and she said that the reason why that was because she 
put on the wrong underwear. You don't Is wash your damn underwear? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, but, but check this out. So the deep thing, I don't know how deep y'all watched it because what I do is sometimes you just gotta be quiet and let things unfold. Who was the heck? Let me mind my man. Let me, who was the chick that came out against Snoop? Talking about she got a she got an army and Snoop wanna go to war. Susan Rice. Susan Rice is working for the government. Who did she work for? Uh, up under Obama, the Obama administration. So she basically challenged Snoop and basically said she has an uh, she has an army and she told Snoop straight up, you won't win. Mm -hmm. So Snoop turned around and apologized. Now I'm sitting back, now I'm hearing this. Now this woman used to work for the State Department. So I'm saying to myself, here you are, a black woman. And but because Snoop is coming to his friend's aid in death to check this chick, Gail King, right? You as a black woman are gonna turn around because he called her a bitch. You're going to turn around now and you're going to get the white man's army on Snoop. That whole dynamic bothers my spirit and my soul, man. So what are we really dealing with with these people, man? The Charles Barkley's of the world. Yeah, we, should re we should remember Kobe Bryant as a record. Now listen, let me ask everybody in this room something. Is everyone in this room done something that you're not too proud of? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure everyone in this room has done some things that we're not too proud of, am I right or wrong? That we don't want nobody to know. I was doing an interview for, uh, you are familiar with the BBC? British Broadcasting Company? I'm doing a show about music. They wanted to dive into the early days before Public Enemy. They actually lied to me and they said, well, they interviewed Chuck and Flavor already and they just wanted to know what we was, you know, what we was doing for the music. To be honest, what they do is they get these beautiful big leg women <laughs> and put them in front of you to enter you so you're gone, you relax. You understand what I'm saying? So, I'm talking, I'm getting comfortable. I'm, you know, just kind of talking about my early days. You understand what I'm saying? What we used to do in New York.